Have you ever wondered why salt in the soil is bad for plants? Okay, well, I hadn't actually wondered this in a conscious sort of a way until I was watching this video here. Um, actually, everything from this channel is awesome. But they did a, uh, a kind of a demonstration where the premise here is that you have a live potato, effectively, that is skinned and put a little hole in it with some salt, and then you do it again with another one that you don't put salt in, and then you set them in a, a bowl of water. So loosely speaking, what's going on here is you have um, a cell, and there's water outside the cell and water inside the cell. If there's a, a not very much salt outside, what ends up happening is because of the way osmosis works, if, if you increase the amount of salinity inside of a cell, it actually pulls water into the cell so that inside and outside the cell, the uh, salt content is, is equivalent. So plants do this um, to, to draw water up into their roots. So what better way to actually demonstrate that than by taking uh, a root. This is a potato root, uh, but that's you know what you're eating. The demonstration has you cook one. This is my cooked one, see? So all the cells are dead in this one, essentially. And this one is still effectively alive. I mean, it's sitting around, um, but if I planted this, you know, it's got a few eyes, it would grow. So what we're gonna do is skin off the outside so that there's good contact between water and the potato, and then cut this into a couple of chunks. And in one chunk, we're gonna put salt, and in another chunk, we're gonna just have an empty hole. And we're gonna do that with the live potato. And then we're gonna take these two chunks that are already boiled, and we're gonna skin off the skin and put them in water as well. And again, put salt in one and just leave the other one empty and then see what the effect is in terms of how much water creeps up into that salt. And then just for completeness, I think I'm actually going to take an extra piece of this guy and put him in his own little bowl. But instead of, uh, instead of putting salt in there or leaving it empty, what I'm actually gonna do is put salty water around them to, to, to represent when there's a lot of salt in the soil, which is, which is you know, bad for plants, supposedly. I'm gonna have a kind of a salty, briny water here, and then I'm gonna put a uh, potato chunk in there with a hole in it, and then see kind of what happens. Does it, does it dry out? Does it become salty? I don't know exactly what will happen on that one, because it wasn't in the original video, but this other one, I got a good sense of what's going to happen. So let's get to peeling. Peeling, peeling, peeling. I got a bucket down here. I'm not just crazy. I'm sure you've all seen peel, peeling potatoes before, but that's what's going on. Of course, I missed the bucket. Ah! Man, this thing gets really one down. Yeah, a bunch of this is just going on the floor. That'll be fun later. Actually, you know what? I don't need to do it close anymore. Aha, number two. So I'm gonna skin this one first and then cut it into the, the three chunks that I need. This is kind of a big potato, so I'm gonna do two in this one, one with salt, one without, and then that's and then there's gonna be another one for um, in the salty water. Get off of you. Ha ha! So now I need to make some holes in this. What I'm gonna do is take a kniff. I need my bucket back. Cut out. A little hole. This is the easy one because it's cooked. Uh, when doing this, do not cut your hand. You know, like basic kitchen safety stuff. I'm concerned I might have made the hole too deep. So uh, anyway, but I'm gonna stop. Hopefully, since since I'm not expecting any water transpiration into the, the cooked potato at, at all, because the cells are dead, so the uh, membrane that the water osmosis can occur across has all been smooshed up and the starches are all over the place. So these ones shouldn't transpire water. So I'm less concerned about the whole depth on these ones, but keep it pretty shallow. There, that's probably a bit better. For this potato, well, I guess one of them is gonna be the middle chunk. So we'll do end chunk, end chunk, middle chunk. I guess middle chunk is gonna go here for the salty solution. The not so salty solution is gonna have these guys in the other corners. I'm adjusting the bottom of this. Just cut a little bit off to make it sit a bit flatter. Yeah, that's better. I think I do that on the other ones. Wow, that's a good idea. Tip, cut the bottom of the potato off so they can sit flat on the bottom of your container. Now these ones, since they're raw, it'll be a little bit harder to cut them out. Ah! Okay, so just kind of an angle.
And the way that I'm cutting this is like the way that you would stab yourself with the hand if you were uncareful. So, you know, carefulness, big middle-y bit. Okay, there's that one. Now, salt. You need to add salt to two of them. So one cooked, one not cooked, and leave the other two empty. The idea being since the gradient of salt, how much salt is in this, on the inside of the cell versus the outside of the cell, is what controls where the water is flowing. The idea is that if you put a big clump of like just way too much salt in the middle of the potato for the living cells, what's going to happen is the ones next to that are going to actually empty out water and become saltier themselves. But then the next one over is gonna give up its water and the next one over is gonna give up its water and so on all the way from the middle of the potato to the outside. And it'll actually soak water up into where the salt is, which is how roots bring water in from their surroundings. One of the ways, I mean, capillary action and other stuff, but if their surroundings are way too salty for them, they won't be able to draw that water in. Ah. Okay, so I'm gonna do this one there. Lots of salt. Okay, here's a cooked one. Doing a cooked one with, uh, with lots of salt. It's the weirdest baked potato. I guess it's not baked, I boiled it, I boiled it. I'm gonna wanna put water in this, but while I was planning on pouring water in this, I'm actually gonna let this sit inside the house um, so I can do some other stuff out here. So um, I'll go ahead and pour that on the inside. But before that, I need to make the uh, saline solution for this guy. Yeah, that's probably sufficiently too much. Stir. So you can see on the bottom there, there's plenty of salt, but I gotta stir it for a good bit and dissolve as much of this as possible. So on the outside of this one, we're gonna go ahead and pour the super salty solution. And the idea is on this one, water will actually get drawn out of the potato. So that middle area will become drier. Okay, so it was about a year ago when I recorded that, and I had a couple of issues. Um, first was the fact that I had horrible audio and my time lapse didn't work, and when I was editing this video, it really just didn't feel like there was a good payoff at the end, like uh, in terms of the in terms of the data. Yes, I was able to get pretty much the result that I was expecting, where the live potato soaked up plenty of water uh, into the salt, and it got very soggy. Um, however, the cooked potato also soaked up some water, and I think maybe I left it too long, but without the time lapse, I can't be sure. And also, the uh, potato that I put in the briny water, I, w I was just kind of playing around there, and I didn't know what to expect. And while at the end, yeah, it did feel a little bit drier, it was kind of like ambiguous. It's like, well, did water go out of it or not? And what was supposed to happen there? So I have redone it. Um, here's the uh, setup. So these two are cooked. Obviously that one has salt. These two are cooked. Uh, these two are not cooked and they're sitting in water. These two over here, they're both sitting in briny water. Um, this one's just empty and this one has a little bit of water with a tiny drop of food coloring. And I put the food coloring in there just to make it clear that um, one, it would be easier to tell where the water level is, um, but also in case it creeps into the potato, I'll be able to cut the potato out and see uh, kind of what happened. Cause, or even if it makes it all the way out, that would be impressive. Hopefully this is a lot better. I got uh, I got time lapse set up there. High tech. Okay, so it's been about two hours now, and I think the results are, again, fairly clear. Here we go. So, uh, like I said earlier, this side is cooked. I had this happen last time as well, where, you know, there's definitely some water that got up into here. And I don't know whether that just soaked through from the potato itself, or whether some did manage to come through. Um, but regardless of that, um, it still definitely is a lot drier or didn't come through anywhere near as much water as here. So if you can see, get a good angle, you can see there's a huge puddle, it's dribbling over the side, and a whole bunch of the salt has gone down. Now obviously this is still goop, there's still some salt in there, but it's coming back out over the edge, and there's a whole little puddle of water that got pulled up through the live potato. These two are live. Um, but it needed the salt, see, because here it's not wet at all. 
And here, it's also not really wet. While the salt was able to pull through some of the slightly cooked potato, bonk, bonk, bonk. It definitely didn't come through very well. Whereas here, the, uh, the, there was a much more active transport from the cells helping it out. Uh, this one is in the briny solution. Up here is, is definitely drier, which is what I observed last time, but what really clinches it is this guy here. It, um, clearly, I had the water line right up to here, up near the top, and it's definitely gone down significantly out the outside of the potato. Now, what I wanna do here is go ahead and cut this in half and just see if any of the, wa uh, any of the food coloring got carried along. I don't think it did very much because the osmosis isn't, is gonna leave behind the particles of colorant, but you can definitely tell that water was uh, drawn out of the potato. Okay, so the trick will be, ooh, ooh, it's all squishy. Ooh, that's interesting. Ooh, it's all, oh, it's definitely squishy. Ooh, wow, okay, those, yeah, it's like, well, it's less firm, I guess, because it's it's had the water drawn out of it. Let's see this one. Yeah, this one still feels very firm. That is an interesting result. Yeah, this still feels very firm. Well, these are cooked, but yeah, the ones that have been in the salt water are kind of squishy, like something happens. I mean, obviously I know what happened. The, water, the salt drew it out, so that's interesting. Let's see if I can cut this. Yeah, so even though it had the food coloring in there, it didn't really go very far into it at all. So the food coloring did, wasn't able to transfer through the potato, so it's showing that it's just sending along, the water is all that's passing through the surface of the potato. The food coloring got stuck, but it did help me show the length of the water. And you can see the food coloring followed like the cut lines, but when I actually cut it in half, it's not like it crept through or anything because it's, it's going through the cells. It's not going in between them, it's going through the cells themselves. So I think that about does it for this experiment. I'm really glad that I did it the second time. It really made the experiment a lot more clear to me, especially that second part where it was really obvious that the water was in fact drawn out through the potato into the briny water. And it really was about where the salt was. It wasn't just that roots, whenever they can draw water in. So I thought it was interesting that these got a little bit squishy, but that the food coloring didn't go through the potato. And I feel like that really helped to show that it was the cells, the water was moving into and out of the cells that it was leaving behind the other particles like the salts. So on youcanscienceit.com, I am gonna go ahead and write this blog up, uh, whether you're a teacher and you wanna try this out in class. Um, it did take about half an hour to really see viable results, but it still could be doable in like an hour long class. Um, also, um, you know, if you're just an independent person and you're interested in trying this out, because like I always say, you don't have to take my word for it because you can science it. Oh, see.